selections. So selections are those kind of statements uh, that are basically doing a Boolean expression evaluation. And if it's true, we execute something. And sometimes if it's false, we execute something else. So we start with the motivating problem. You remember the compute area math, uh, class that we wrote for elementary programming, that basically the user enters a radius and we compute the area of that circle. However, if the user enters a negative radius, it's a correct integer, we read it with a scanner, but it's not a positive integer. So it doesn't make sense to print that the area of a circle with radius minus one is pi. No, it doesn't make sense because there are no circles with negative areas. So really what we want in a programming language are if statements. If something is true, then execute something else. Now, first thing that we actually want is to be able to compare numbers, find out that the radius is negative. And Java basically gives us this opportunity with six comparison operators for numbers. And these are less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, uh, equality. And you see that is two equal signs because it wants to be this, uh, separate from assignment. You don't want when you say i equal three, you want, there is a distinction between i is assigned the value three or is compared if it's equal with three. So double equal is used for comparison and exclamation sign equal is not equal. So exclamation sign we will see later that is also the operator for not something to be inverted. It's also used in mathematics in some cases. Uh, some textbooks use tilde or uh, a not sign or exclamation sign. The result of a comparison is a Boolean value, true or false. So if we compare one greater than two is false, false will be assigned to the variable B. So we evaluate this Boolean expression and we assign it to B. So there are six operators for comparing numbers. And this is similar to math. If statements can be written in multiple ways. The first way to write an if statement is one way if statements. So if some Boolean expression is true, we execute the statements within that if statement, and then we continue the rest of the execution. If it was false, then we don't execute that statement. We just continue with the rest of the statements. So you can see it in the flowchart below. Basically, it computes the Boolean expression. If the value is false, it skips the statement. If it's true, it executes the statement. In both cases, it continues with the next statements after the if statement. Uh, here is an example. If the radius is greater than or equal with zero, then the area is computed in, first, in one statement, and then we output the area of the circle with the given radius is that area. So basically the block that is executed if the condition is true is enclosed within uh, the block open curly brace, close curly brace, saying that there are more than one statement in this if statement. Otherwise one statement is actually not required to put in a, in a curly brace. So there is a question do we need the curly brace? In this case, we do. However, we will see that when you have a single statement, then we don't. Because it is expected that, uh, the, that uh, for one single statement, one single statement is expected after the if clause. So it's either that you put the, 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 the block or not, for single statements. For more than one statement, in this case, we have two statements. We have an assignment that ends here with semicolon and then a print statement. Because we have two statements, we need the block. So we need in this case, the block because we have multiple statements. If we would have a single statement, then we don't need the block. The other thing that you may want to ask is like in Python, do we need the parentheses? In Java, we need, the containment is needed. 
If you don't put the parentheses around the Boolean expression, you get a compiler error. So these are the two syntactical points about if statements. The second type of conditional statements are two-way if statements. If a Boolean condition is true, execute the statements for the true case. Else, if it's false, execute the statements for the false case. In either case, after it executes either one of those statements, it basically continues with the rest of the code after the if statement. Okay. So for instance, if I want to print the, the area, if the radius is greater than zero, then I have that condition. If the radius is greater than zero, the area is the radius multiplied with the radius multiplied with 3.14159, end of statement. And then system out print ln and preprint the area. Else, and the same rule applies for the else statement as for the if statement. If you have a single statement, you can leave it without a block. If you want, you can put the block. However, if you have multiple st uh, statements inside that uh, part, true part or false part, you need to enclose it within a block, curly braces. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Now, we usually have a cascade of if statements. So for instance, let's say that I want to compute a grade and the score is from zero to a hundred. And now I want to assign to the variable grade. Um, okay, so one other question that somebody is asking is why is the statement L, uh, system dot out print ln indented? Is not it, the question is why isn't the statement indented? It is indented. Is if you can see, uh, it's one tab within the L statement. So it is indented. And also, do we need to use brackets for else? No. So again, it's exactly the case with the if statement that we had here. If no block containment is necessary for a single statement. So like in this case, we can eliminate the brackets because there is a single print statement after the if. Similarly here, if there is a single statement, we don't need the brackets. We don't need them. It's not that it's wrong if we add them, but we don't need them, basically, that we can we can omit them. Oh, OK, I see you. Thank you. Welcome. So in this case, we have basically a very verbose program. If the score is greater than 90, then the grade is assigned A. Else, we actually, within the else, we have an if else statement. If the score is greater than 80, then the grade is assigned B. Else to this if. If the score is greater than 70, then the grade is assigned C. Else, if the score is greater than 60, then the grade is assigned D. Else, the grade is F. So you see that basically now you can see in this program that the else branch is an if else statement itself. On this branch, within the else statement, we have an if else statement itself, and so on. Normally, Java basically doesn't uh, use indentation for anything. So if we want to write this more concise into a single column, we can write it this way. Basically, we can put the if right after the else. So else if, and then else if, and then else if, and the last case is else. Because in Java, there is actually a rule that says, Every else matches the last if in the same block, in the same block. So basically we know what this else matches is the previous, if we look up from this else is the previous if statement that is unmatched. This to this else is this if statement. For this else is this if statement. So those indentations are not actually required and it makes the code more compact and easier to read. So if we want, for instance, to see how this program works, we can trace it. We can basically consider that uh, the score is 70. 
If the score is greater than 90, it's false because 70 is not greater than 90. So it jumps to the else part. And now it's another if statement. If the 70, the score is greater than 80, it's also false. So it goes on the else part. If the 70 score is greater than 70, greater than equal with 70 is true. So the grade is assigned C and we finish the, this if statement and we basically are out of the cascade of if statements. So you see that each one of these else's corresponds to the previous if in the same block. And that's exactly the, the case in Java. The else close matches the most recent if in the same block. So even if the indentation is wrong, so some programmers are coming from Python. If you took 101, you're coming from Python and the indentation is God, meaning that uh, else, this else matches this if. That's not the case in Java. In Java, basically the rule is that this else matches the most recent if in the same block that is unmatched yet. So basically in this case is really that this else matches this if. So let's see what happens. I is equal with one, J is equal with two, K is equal with three. If I, which was one is greater than two is false. There is no else for this if statement so because this entire if else is internal to the true part of this if statement. So this program doesn't print anything because basically what happened is that the programmer made a mistake and this else is not indented correctly. Is It should be like this, like on the right hand side. If we want that else to actually match the first if, we would have to put the inner if into a block because now this else doesn't match that if anymore because this else and that if are not in the same block. This else is in the same block only with this if. And if we execute the same code, one greater than two is false, else prints B and in prints B. So these are the if else statements. Okay. Now, if you are using the end of line uh, blocks, a uh, beginning of line block style. So prog C programmers would put the bracket here basically be, uh, within the if statement. Be very, very careful not to put a semicolon at the end of the condition. A semicolon by itself is what is called a no operation statement. So in Java, there is this one statement, which is semicolon, okay? So it doesn't matter where you put it. You can basically put semicolon anywhere you want. You can put a bunch of semicolons. This is totally correct. In Java, semicolon by itself is the empty statement, okay? This program runs fine and is syntactically correct. They didn't print anything, didn't do anything because semicolon is a statement. If you use it inside here, it will think that if the radius is greater than zero, execute no op and then continue with the rest of the code. It's not a compilation error. You will, but the problem is that you are still printing areas for radius for circles with negative radius because this statement here didn't do anything. Okay. And to the question, are you going to write an application this semester? Every single lab has like five applications. Now, let's see a couple of more examples. What is wrong in this code? I'm asking the user to enter their cholesterol level. I'm reading it from some scanner keyboard that was created before. And now I'm checking if the cholesterol is greater than 200, I would like to print that the cholesterol is too high and you need to lower that. Else, go away, eat as much as you want. What is wrong with this code? I will tell you already that it doesn't compile. Brackets, brackets. Brackets, brackets. Very good. So basically the problem is that Java would think that the first statement is all that it is in the uh, if statement. Everything else is what follows later. So that else that we can see here doesn't match anything because we finish the if statement before the second print statement. Okay. 
So if we want to fix it, we basically put it in a bracket. What about this code? So in this code, again, our intention is that if the cholesterol is greater than 200, uh, we print out your cholesterol is too high, you need to lower that. We don't want to be printed, you need to lower that if the cholesterol is not over 200, because it's okay. It's you, a cholesterol of, let's say, 10 is not a bad one. It's actually maybe too low. So you don't need to lower that. Again, this is an error. It's a different kind of error. It's a logical error, meaning that we get output that is not necessary, is not what, the, what we intended. And again, the solution to that is to put brackets. Again, remember that that rule with, and this is a very good rule for Python, people that come from Python programming. Uh, you really, indentation is meaningless in Java. What is important is blocks. The fact that when you want something to be executed only in a certain context, you have to put it in that context and nothing else. And we stop here. We are one minute over time. And we'll continue with the rest of uh, selection statements next class. If you have any questions, I will be here to take a few questions. And then uh, basically we'll see you in the lab. Thank you, Professor. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night.